Engineer Man here. I have a quick disclaimer before I do this video. Some things you may see in this video could be used for exploitation and other nefarious purposes. I don't condone any exploiting or attacking any system which you do not own or have permission to exploit. Okay, time to use Bash to remotely create some reverse shells. No time to waste. Let's jump in. Just like every other video, we have an outline here using Bash to remotely create a reverse shell. The difficulty today is easy. We talk about what is a reverse shell, who might use a reverse shell, and why and how to do a reverse shell. So what's a reverse shell? Well, it's the opposite of getting a normal shell. So if you wanted to manage a Linux system, ordinarily you would use SSH or something like that to log into that server. That would be considered gaining a shell into that server. A reverse shell is when you have that machine send another machine a shell which it can be used to execute commands on. Who might use reverse shell and why? I, I can think of a couple of legitimate reasons. For instance, maybe you have a friend who's working on a Linux system and he says, hey, can you help me real quick? This would be a real easy way to send somebody a shell and then you could help that person out. But mostly this is used for nefarious purposes. If a hacker were to, or a security auditor were to compromise a system, he could use a reverse shell to then send a prompt to another machine, which he could then use to do other things on. And now we're going to create a reverse shell. So just to set the stage here, I have two terminals here. The left terminal is a server which is here in my home. On the right side, I have a remote server located in Iowa. Before you do a reverse shell, what you're going to need is you're going to have to set up a port forwarding port. You can see that I've done so on port 1337, which points to my home IP. So on the left side, on my server here in my house, I'm going to go ahead and use netcat and I'm going to listen on port 1337 and you're going to see that it's going to do nothing. On the right side, on the remote server, and this could be any server anywhere in the world, doesn't matter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use bash, I'm going to do bash-i for interactive, I'm going to use this special syntax here which says redirect standard out and standard er to the following location. We're going to use the TCP protocol directly to have TCP. I'm going to provide home IP, which I have, a, I have an entry in my Etsy host that points home IP to my actual IP. And then I'm going to do 1337, which is the IP for my home. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to redirect standard in to standard out. And since standard out is also redirected to that target. And then you're going to see that as soon as I hit enter, if you look on the left terminal, oh my. I have a prompt over here. And you can see now that I can see everything in this remote server. I can look at logs, I can check users, I can do anything I want. And it's as root. It's as if you're logged in over here. Now if you haven't realized yet, this is a pretty dangerous capability. And what I'm going to do later is I'm going to cover in a separate video additional things you can do, particularly around security and how to prevent yourself from having this sort of thing happen. Because this is a huge attack vector that can give an attack a root very easily. And there's a number of things, particularly programming languages and other software, that have access to run commands directly on the system, if, if they're running root. And that's it. Hopefully everyone learned something. If I forgot to cover something or you'd like to learn more or you'd like to request a tutorial, post a comment below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss new videos. See you next time.